Hello everybody and welcome to this video on microeconomic diagrams and I'm just going to give a brief overview of all the diagrams you'll need in Unit 1 AS Level Economics or Microeconomics. So, firstly, a PPF. Now a PPF, uh, if you remember from the video before, shows the different combinations of goods, in this case our spending on the NHS and our spending on education, that's our, different, that's our combination shows the different combinations of goods an economy can produce when it is working at full efficiency and that's what this curve represents full efficiency so in this case our combination of goods is the NHS and education we can either spend money on the NHS or on education and if I'm spending 800 billion pounds on the NHS and I'm working at full efficiency then I can read over to this curve and it, I can work out how much I'm spending on education and in this case I'm spending 800 billion pounds as well on education however if I decide, decide that I need to increase my spending on education by 150 billion pounds this means if I go to 950 billion pounds on my education scale I read upwards and then I read across and I find that I've had to cut my spending on the NHS by 400 billion pounds. So this is my opportunity cost. By increasing my spending uh, on education, I've had to cut my spending on the NHS. Next we have demand curves. Now demand curves on their Y axis they have price and on their X axis they have the quantity demanded and the curve itself slopes downwards from left to right and this is because when the price is high it's less attractive for consumers to buy goods so therefore they won't demand those goods so therefore the quantity being demanded will be low and that's shown there where the price is high if you read across and then down the quantity being demanded is low then if the price is low however there is an incentive to buy the good because it is cheaper so therefore because it is cheaper more people will demand it so therefore the quantity demanded will be high and this is shown here as well if we go to where the price is low when we read across and then read down our quantity demanded is high when there is a there and there is an increase in demand for any factor that isn't price that affects demand then our curve shifts to the right in this case in this little diagram in the right here this is shown by a shift from d1 to d2 and this is because if we stay at the same price level if we read across to where D1 was, we, were, we had a demand of Q1. But now if we read across to where D2 is, our shift in the demand curve, we now have a quantity being demanded of Q2, which is bigger than Q1. So therefore our demand has increased. Next we have supply curves. And supply curves also have price on the y-axis and quantity supplied on the x-axis. But unlike demand curves, they slope upwards from left to right. And this is because if the price is high, so the good is expensive, it means that there will be more profit to be made from selling that good. And because businesses are motivated by profit, that means more businesses will come along and enter the market for that good. So more businesses will start producing that good because they can sell it and make a bigger profit from it. So this means that supply will be high as there are more producers of that good. And this is shown here, where the price is high, if we read along to the supply curve and read down, our quantity being supplied is also high. But then the opposite happens if the price is low. Profit margin is low, there's less profit to be made. So businesses will exit the market or not many will enter. So therefore there will, we don't have as many producers of that good. So therefore our quantity supplied will also be low. And that's shown here where the price is low we read across and then read down and our quantity supplied is low. And we can also shift our supply curve if there is an increase uh, or a decrease in any other factor affecting supply. So for example, an increase in supply is shown by a downward shift in the curve, shown on this diagram on the right here as a shift from S1 to S2. And this is because if we read across from our price at S1, we, were, we had a supply of Q1, but now if we read across to S2, we now have a supply of Q2, which is bigger than Q1. So therefore our supply is increased. If our supply decreases, we go the opposite way, so therefore, if we read across from price to S1, our quantity being supplied is Q1. But if we read across from price to S3, our quantity supplied is Q3, which is a lot less than Q1. So therefore, supply is decreased. And we can put supply and demand curves together to create a demand and supply curve, oddly enough. 
And where our demand and supply curve cross, we have the equilibrium where demand equals supply. And our equilibrium price is the price at where demand equals supply. And our equilibrium quantity demanded or quantity supplied is the quantity at where demand equals supply. And no matter if the, if the curves shift, our new equilibrium will be where the new curves meet. So for example, the diagram on top here shows a shift in the demand curve from D1 to D2, so an increase in demand. And that results in our new equilibrium price being P2, because this is now where D2 and S cross. So this is our new equilibrium. And the same with the supply curve underneath. Supply decreases, so it shifts from S1 to S2. And therefore our new equilibrium has gone from P1 to P2, because our new equilibrium is where S2 and D cross, which is P2. However, if our price is not set at the equilibrium, then we get excesses of either demand or supply. Our graph on the left shows excess demand, because at this low price, if we draw across to our supply curve, we get QS. But if we draw across even further, we to our demand curve, we get QD. So our quantity being demanded is further along the axis than our quantity being supplied. So therefore demand is greater than supply. So therefore we have excess demand. Our diagram on the right shows excess supply. And at this high price, if we draw across from our P, where, where we hit the demand curve, we draw down and we get QD. And if we draw across further to the supply curve and draw down, we get QS. So in this case, QS is further along the axis than QD. So therefore QS is greater than QD. So therefore supply is greater than demand. So therefore there is excess supply. Next, we move on to our negative externalities graphs. Now, the graph on the right-hand side of the screen shows social costs and private costs, or marginal social costs and marginal private costs. And both of these lines slope upwards. The distance or difference between these two lines is the external cost, the total external cost. So therefore, external costs equal social costs minus private costs, because this is the distance between the two lines. And if we were to draw this on a graph with our social benefits line sloping downwards, then we get a triangle here. And everywhere in this triangle, social costs are greater than social benefits. So therefore, society is overall losing out. So we experience welfare loss and therefore market failure. And this triangle, therefore, is known as the triangle of welfare loss. And finally, we have our positive externality graphs. So straight over to the right hand side of the screen again. This time we have a line showing social benefits and private benefits. And both of these lines showing benefits slope downwards from left to right. And the distance or difference between these two lines is our total external benefit. So therefore external benefits equal social benefits minus private benefits or the difference or the distance between the two lines. And if we were to draw them on a diagram with our social and private costs, this diagram further to the left here, the social costs line and the private cost line slope upwards together, and the social benefits line again slope downwards together. And we get a triangle forming here. And everywhere in this triangle, social benefits are greater than social costs. So therefore, overall, society is gaining. So therefore, this triangle is known as the triangle of welfare gain.